All right, welcome to section 1.5, Properties of Real Numbers. We have five basic properties we're going to look at here, and I'm going to give you examples of how they all work. Um, you can see I have three, well, maybe, hopefully you can see, I have three on the first board here, and then we'll get the other two when I, when I clear the board off. All right, so there are five basic properties, but the first four actually come in two parts. One part for addition and one part for multiplication. The good news is they're identical, the addition and multiplication kinds are identical. You just change your addition sign to a multiplication sign. Uh, these properties do not work with either subtraction or division, which is really unfortunate, but true. So let's get started. Our first property is the commutative property. The commutative property for addition just is, is what tells us that 2 plus 3 and 3 plus 2 are the same thing. And same thing for multiplication. It tells us that 2 times 3 and 3 times 2 are the same thing. Basically, with the commutative property, you can switch the order for addition or multiplication without changing the outcome. The associative property, again, two parts, addition and multiplication. The associative property is going to change what is grouped inside of the parentheses. Again, importantly, this only works for addition and multiplication. So for addition, my first example here, I have 2 plus, and then inside the parentheses, 3 plus 4. But that's exactly the same as if I move those parentheses to put it around the 2 and the 3, and then have the plus 4. So, and then it works the same way for multiplication, just changing what is inside the parentheses. 2 times, and then parentheses, 3 times 4, is the same as 2 times 3 in the parentheses, times 4. And then finally on this board, before I clear it off and give you another one, the identity property. Your identity is who you are, so nothing is going to change. For addition, that means you're adding zero. In this case, two plus zero is still two. And for multiplication, two times one is zero. So two, or I'm sorry, zero is called the additive identity because it doesn't change anything. And one is called the multiplicative identity because it doesn't change anything. So zero is the additive identity, it doesn't change anything under addition. One is the multiplicative identity, it doesn't change anything under multiplication. And those are our first three properties. We're gonna look at two more and yeah, that'll be it. So here we have our last two properties. We have the inverse property and then the distributive property. So the inverse property takes you back to zero for addition and back to one for multiplication. Back to those identities that we actually had on the, on the identity property, right? Zero was the additive identity, one was the multiplicative identity. So we're gonna go back to those places. Well, for addition, you get back to zero by adding an opposite. So if you have a seven, you add a negative seven and that gets you to zero. That's actually going to be a really important thing when we start solving equations. For multiplication, three times its reciprocal, and we always use the reciprocal, will be one. Uh, and you can see that for yourself. If you put that three over one and you do three over one times one over three, when you go straight across, you get three over three, which is just one. Then finally, we have the distributive property. Distributive property, super fun. This one's very useful when we start doing uh, solving equations because what we're going to be looking for is to figure out what x is going to have to equal, but it's frequently going to be stuck inside of a set of parentheses. So the easiest way to get it out of there is to use what's called the distributive property. So I have three times and then my parentheses x plus five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number that's on the outside being multiplied and multiply it by both parts on the inside. In this case, since I have an addition sign in the middle, the addition sign comes straight down to the middle. By the way, that also works with subtraction in the middle. If this were a minus sign, you could drop your minus sign down to the middle. So once we do that, 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 5 is 15. And to be perfectly honest, most people skip from the very beginning here to the last step. Uh, the middle step gets left out. I like to put it in there at least once to show everybody what is actually happening. We're taking this number on the outside and multiplying it by both parts, but you're more than welcome to skip right down to here because it's not, it's not terrible. All right, so for those of you who are in my class, you're probably wondering, okay, how's he gonna put this onto a test? If you're not in my class, this would be a great time to turn the video off because you don't care. Um, but for those of you in my class, uh, this will be on your next test. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put matching on your test. So you'll see a list of the properties. 
you'll see a list of examples of those properties and you will have to match them up. Okay, the right property with the right example. And that's, that's what I'll be looking for. So good luck.